Hey guys, this video is going to go over the day seven homework assignment from unit four in the CAPS course. This assignment is all about uh, using log properties to evaluate different expressions. Uh, we're focusing here on the change of base property, the product, and the quotient property of logs. So let's start with the change of base property. Um, this was helpful for, um, this was particularly helpful for people when the calculators did not have the option to indicate what base you wanted. Originally, graphing calculators only had a log key that had a base of 10. So this was really useful when you had bases that weren't 10. So it turns out that you can take uh, log base 10 of the argument and divide it by log base 10 of the base of your original log, and that actually comes out to the exact answer that, that you're looking for. So log 5 divided by log 4 uh, is what we're going to go for here. Um, log 5 divided by the log of 4. Uh, is 1.16, 1.161 if we round it to the nearest thousand, 1.161. All right, so here we take the log of 40 divided by the log of 6. It's easy to remember the base goes on bottom because the base is subscripted. Um, so it, it's kind of set up in such a way that makes it easy to remember in my humble opinion. 2.059, okay. Okay, log of 13 over log of six. One point four three two twenty two over six one point seven two five. Okay, so there's your change of base property. Uh, let's jump into the product rule. So the product property for log says that when we're adding together several log terms at once, that all share the same base. And that's the key part here. They have to have the same base. Um, then what we can do is, um, is just add all of those, or we can take those logs and multiply the arguments together and rewrite them as one log, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, <laughs> that's a typo, I apologize, I'll fix that. Um, there should be an L there. Okay, so we're gonna take five, a thousand. Okay, so it turns out that the typo here was actually that that two was supposed to be in L, so that is not a two, okay. So I'm gonna rewrite this entire term as one log, and we're gonna take the two and multiply it by the five and multiply it by the 100. All right, two times five times 100 is 1,000. How do we get from 10 to 1,000? Uh, that would be three. Okay, when we subtract two log expressions with the same bases, we can divide their arguments together. Okay, so that goes log base two of eight. How do we get from two to eight using an exponent? Two to the power of three would be the exponent. Okay, so again here we can multiply uh, 32 times 8. 32 times 8 would be, let's see, 240, 256. How do we get from 4 to 256? So 4, 16, uh, 64. 
and then 256 would be to the power of 4. So 4 is our answer. All right. So when we have leading terms, or leading coefficients, I should, should say, we can use the power property and bring them back up here to the, to the top as exponents. Okay. So what we have now would be log of 8 plus the log of 25 plus the log of 5. Okay. All of this turns into the log of 8 times 25 is 200 times 5 is 1,000. So once again, we have an answer of 3 because 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. All right, so now we have a combination of uh, subtraction and addition, which means we're going to use division and multiplication. Since division and multiplication are commutative, we can do this in any order we want. So I'm going to do it in this order here. All right, so 100 divided by 25 is 4. So that would simplify to that. Plus log base 2 of 12 divided by 3 is also 4. Okay, so at this point, I can multiply the 4s together to get 16 and rewrite it as 1, or I could simply solve each side. Log base 2 of 4 is 2. Log base 2 of 4 is 2, so my final answer is 4. I would have gotten 4 either way. Um, so if you can ever solve a part of the problem right off the bat, then by all means, go ahead and do so. I could have done that up here as well. Log of 100 is 2. And then I could have added 2 to whatever I get over here, which would have ended up being 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. So um, lots of ways to go about answering these, which is great. OK, so this one looks a little dicey at first, and then we realize that everything actually works out quite nice. Yes, there's an x in there, so I'll square that. Uh, another x here, I will square that. OK, so all together we have the x squared term plus 8, so that'll mean times 8. So I'll write times 8, and then we're going to divide that by, because there's a minus sign, minus is division, We'll divide that by x squared. Well, x squared over x squared cancels, so we only have the 8 remaining. Log base 2 of 8, how do we get from 2 to 8? We use the power of 3. All right. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and assess each side here um, instead of multiplying. Log base 7 of 1 over 49 is negative 2. 7 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 49. And log base 7 of 49 is positive 2. Add those two numbers together, and you get 0. All right, let's bring that half power up there. And let's bring that second power up there. OK, so we have log base 3 of 1 to the 1 half is still 1, it turns out. Okay, and then we have log base 3 of uh, 3 squared is 9. There we go. Okay, um, so I can combine these, I suppose. I'll, I'll use a variety of ways of solving. 1 over 9, if I divide the two arguments, is what I get. And 3 to the power of what is 1 over 9? 3 to the power of 2. Okay, so remember, when there's subtraction, make sure you divide those numbers when you put the two terms together into one. All right, this one was more just a joke. When we multiply a bunch of logs with the same bases together, we get, um, we, can, we can take the product. Oh, those should be addition symbols. There's another typo. I'm glad we're going through this now. Those should all be pluses, so I'll make sure I fix that. So when there's pluses, you can multiply all those letters together. So when we multiply all those letters together, we get log of C-A-B-I-N. That's log cabin. There we 
There you go. All right, so here, how do we get it from two to four? Well, we square two. Um, and let's do this like this. We'll, we'll bring the seven down and then we'll run with just the log here. Log base two of two is one. Yes. All right. So. So on the right side, the seven times log base two of two is the same as seven times one, which is seven. So we get two plus seven, which is nine. Lots of ways to solve that one, but that one, that way is, is certainly not too bad. All right. Cool, so subtraction means division. So why don't we go ahead and divide. 16 divided by four is four. Log base two of four is two. All right, addition means we can multiply. One third times three is one. How do we get from nine to one? Well, that would be with the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is one. Okay, last two questions here have us expand each problem as much as we can. So what I would do here is take each term and separate it out. So here we have a two, so this would be log base b of two. And then we're multiplying, so that shows up as addition, okay? So then we would have log, we'd have the log base b of the letter m, and I can see that it's m squared, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop that squared out front. Okay, and then here we have n cubed, so log base b of n cubed, I dropped the three out front, okay? So here we're gonna have log base three of x, and then the division occurs as we subtract. And now since we're subtracting, or since we're dividing both the y and the x, I better use parentheses. So log base three of y plus log base three of x. I used a plus because y and x are being multiplied by one another. They're just being divided into x. So I use parentheses and then the subtraction symbol to show that division is going on. All right. Logarithms are great. Thanks for watching. Make sure you email your teachers if you have any.